As you can see here, I got a copy of the 35th anniversary Steelbook, which is pretty freaking cool, right? Pretty cool. You got Al Capone on the back, some bullet holes inside is the digital and then the 4K disc. That's it. <laughs> pretty bare bones, but uh, some pretty cool artwork underneath as well of all the heroes on horseback. Wow. So yeah, this would actually look pretty cool in your collection. As far as the picture goes, I mean, yeah, it's actually a native 4K transfer. So the film grain is there because it was filmed in 1987 when they actually filmed it with film cameras. So if you're a grain hater, you might not like it, but I personally like it because I just love that cinematic look from back then. This is in Dolby Vision, so you're gonna get some great HDR highlights and dark levels. It does look really good um, for being a film that was done in 1987. So I'm just gonna assume this is probably the best it's ever looked when it started its home video journey back on VHS back in the 80s. Now, as far as the sound is concerned, it does have a Dolby Atmos soundtrack. So it has been up mixed to Dolby Atmos. I know Dolby Atmos is such a buzzword these days, but uh, honestly, eh, it didn't translate all that well to Dolby Atmos. It's probably just part of their marketing to try and get you to want to purchase this if you're a collector. But to be honest, it didn't really wow me at all. It was just, it, it sounded good, it sounded decent, but I mean, there was no like insane height effects. I mean, it was made in 1987, so you can tell that it is a bit dated as far as the sound design. I mean, dialogue did come through very clearly. There's no question about that. But, you know, sound effects, the gunshots, um, even just like Foley effects. When you listen to those kind of details like cloth rubbing and footsteps and uh, people tinkering with things on screen where they had to add those sound effects in later, I, I could hear that it was pretty dated. So not the greatest Dolby Atmos up mix, you could say, um, but I do appreciate that they at least went for that instead of just sticking with a traditional 5.1 or 7.1 track. But I will say this, I can't say for certain if this is because it was remixed and remastered in Dolby Atmos, but the one standout, as far as the audio is concerned, is Ennio Morricone's soundtrack. Holy cow. I mean, the, the credit sequence alone at the very beginning is just music. And man, it just came out of my speakers like it was a concert. It was really cool. And even throughout the film, anytime his soundtrack is just very prominent in the action, um, it sounded phenomenal. So yes, that is the one standout as far as the audio is concerned, is the soundtrack. If you're into movie soundtracks like I am, man, you're gonna be blown away by watching this in Dolby Atmos. So who is this for? Definitely if you're a fan of Brian De Palma, Robert De Niro, Kevin Costner, you're definitely gonna wanna have this in your collection because like I said, it looks the best it's ever looked. The audio is pretty cool, but the music is outstanding. If you already own this on Blu-ray, eh, maybe. Just because there's no like extra bonus content or new bonus content that they came out with for this 35th anniversary. But if you are a physical media collector, you gotta admit, this steelbook is pretty rad. But since this is critically acclaimed, it got nominated for four Academy Awards. I was a bit too young when it came out in the theaters to know that it had such a big impact in Hollywood. So if you know it and you like it, you're definitely gonna want to pick this up. And there you have it. That's about it. Are you gonna pick it up yourself? Are you a fan of any of these actors or Brian De Palma or Ennio Morricone? Let me know in the comments below. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.